Hi everyone, Steve here. Welcome to this issue of Monday Morning Musings. Hey, we're talking about the issue of God's justice as an attribute, not as the essence of who our Father is. You come across a verse where St. Paul himself quotes this verse from Deuteronomy. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord, I will repay. It's a King James rendering. This is one of those passages that our way of thinking affects our translations and affects how we see that working out. It is impossible for God to be vengeful because vengeance by definition is motivated from a need within the person who's releasing the vengeance. Something needs to be met or satisfied or fulfilled in the person. And God doesn't have any needs. It's impossible for God to be vengeful because he doesn't need to be satisfied. And sometimes when folks get into this, they actually make our father out to be Lamech, like in the, in the, in the Old Testament account in Genesis. Remember, it says if, uh, you know, if somebody harms Lamech, Lamech will get revenge sevenfold. And that's really the way the typical common understanding of God is presented, especially if you're a literalist in the book of Revelation. You know, right now we're under grace and he's given everybody a pass, but boy, he's coming back and it is going to be nasty. Vengeance is based on the ego needs of the one who's been offended. God has no ego needs. And contrary to medieval ideas of God as the offended Lord of the manor in the sky, whose honor requires payment, God is not offended that way. And it, it's, in my opinion, immoral to ascribe those kind of attributes to our Father. So, what do we do with that passage? Just going to unpack it a little bit. That word, vengeance, literally means the outworking of justice. Working out justice. And the word repay, which has commercial connotations and is unfortunate that way and it has the idea of a, a vengeance um, ret retribution getting even is also unfortunate because the idea that's being portrayed there is proportionality look at the entire scope of human existence is one of um, accelerating vengeance, starting in Genesis with Lamech. And the whole reason for the eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, is to try to keep vengeance down, that escalating sense of human vengeance. And Jesus comes to put an end to that motif altogether. And yet, because of one Paulian quote in Deuteronomy, we, 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 we resurrect a, a God image of coming out of the sky, just as angry as angry can be. So here is a better rendering of that passage. The proportional working out of justice belongs to the Lord. Saints, that fits both the Old Testament prophets and the New Testament sense, where God says he will deal with everyone according to their works. Otherwise, in proportion. The Old Testament prophet said this, you're not the kind of God who causes the children to suffer for their father's sin. You know, the fathers have sinned and you know, the children's teeth are set on edge. And the prophets say, no, that's not the way it is. Yet we come to Protestant evangelicalism and the foundation of Protestant evangelicalism is 
Not only is God not proportional, but if you believe in Augustine's teaching, just being born as a human in the condition of sin means you're, you are going to be the object of divine wrath and eternal torment forever. No, God is light. God is love. And the gift of God to humanity is an everlasting father the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father. But he's the judge too. He's the ever... It doesn't say that. Don't bring in those adjectival energies into essence conversations. He is a loving Father who will proportionately work out justice, taking into consideration all things in a way that you and I could never humanly do. Saints, that will change the way you read scripture. That will change the way you understand your father. And that will change the way you interpret that passage. And I'll see you next time.